Welcome to today's episode of The Growth Zone. I am Christian Bartsch. What is the core benefit of listening to this show? Business leaders in corporate and privately held companies gain insights into trends and strategies that provide them with a competitive advantage in the marketplace. Each episode focuses on an area such as marketing, sales, innovation or funding that is absolutely critical to the growth of companies, whether they are startups or corporate global players, where management needs to juggle the challenges of market entry or knowing how to navigate the uncertainties of disruptive developments. Mind feeding is where clarity evolves and helps solving organizational challenges. For those who listen to the entire episode, I have a special surprise gift. I am working on some great guests that are industry leaders in management, innovation and marketing. Let's get started on today's episode. Today I am with Peter and we are going to be talking about following topic. How to automate your tasks of your business, which lead to business growth. Before we go deep into our topic, Peter, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, please? Yes, Christian. Thank you for having me. So um, I it's always when I'm asked that question, I always have to actively decide not to talk about the business first because it, it does take up most of my time. But um there's, there's more to all of us than what we do most of the day. Um, so I, I grew up in, in South Africa. And when I was 18 or so, I ended up coming over to the UK and um, had no plans to, but ended up staying permanently. And I'm married to Sophie, who is a medical oncologist. We have two girls, Emily and Olivia, who are 10 and 8, respectively. And I run, I'm CEO and founder of Macanta, which is a no-code platform allowing you to build um, business processes, automation and CRM um, that can then grow with your business um, as you as you develop and move on from there. Yeah, when you think of it, it's, it's crazy what things are now possible with um, all these platforms where you can actually use systems that you don't need to code, which yeah. makes it much, much easier. When you think of it like 20, 30 years ago, even 40 years ago, coding, there was no way past it. You had to learn the language, you had to know how to build this stuff. And even then, bug fixing was, I think, uh, number one hobby of every programmer because <laughs> nothing is perfect that you program. You always have some bugs or the system fails, other kind of crazy things. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Um, when you learn of all these things and you can automate them, that makes life definitely much easier. And as you mentioned before, um, many people do suffer of one thing in their business, that there's too much small stuff happening that takes up so much time of your day. You have a little, little thing there, a little thing there, and you think, oh, yeah, I'll get this quickly done. And Two hours later, you noticed, what have I done? Yes, you've done a lot, but it's a lot of small stuff that should happen automatically. What yeah, and, and it's, it, it's, it's the easy and the default that, that most of us tend to fall towards is that, oh, it's only going to take a couple of minutes, I'll quickly do this. But then you end up doing it again later in the day, and you do it again tomorrow, and you do it the day after. And, and it, it's this thing that just keeps rolling a bit like a snowball. And then when you start building a team, then it's it's exponential that everyone is then spending a lot of their time doing these little tasks that you think, oh, that's only a couple of minutes, that's only a couple of minutes. But if you then actually take a step back and you look at it and say, okay, we've got so many people on our team doing these tasks X number of times a day, and you take that over the course of a year, what you're actually spending getting those little two-minute tasks done over the course of a year um, can be, depending on the size of your business, but it, it very quickly racks up to quite a lot of money. Exactly. And, and eventually you 
you just uh, lose as well track of your time. You, you you then actually think, okay, I've achieved a lot, but what have I achieved? It's it's yeah. nothing that's really a uh, priority. And then you, you waste your week, you waste your month, and then you get frustrated because you haven't actually achieved anything significant. Yeah, you, you've, you've done a lot, but you've not moved the business forward. Or if, if, if a light bulb, at least an old style incandescent light bulb is a good example of this because the light bulb, yes, it gives light to the room, but most of the electrical energy is lost as heat that does and and it's not it's not enough heat to heat the room so it's just wasted we use the, a bit of the light that it gives us but there's just so much energy wasted and it's the same with it with your own time and with the people in your business and therefore you're paying people to work for you so your own money it's the same thing that there's just such a large amount of what's spent on the resources in the business that's actually just wasted um on these small tasks and nothing of great value exactly and when you said uh, automate you get the time to read books to educate yourself and that's why your staff have more time to uh, not only update their knowledge but as well use de let's say dedicate more time to caring for the customers yeah for the clients Yeah, very much. And we, a, a big focus for us in our business in the way we build our product is that we want to help enable business owners and their teams to focus on delivering their highest value, be that for the customer or for the business, because the kinds of things that can be automated in a business, everyone you can employ pretty much is overqualified to perform those tasks. So you're always taking someone away from doing valuable work to perform menial, repetitive tasks that either you could automate the tasks or by having the right systems and automation in your business, you can eliminate the requirement for those tasks in the first place. Exactly. And it's like with things like, uh, like for instance, with single malt whiskey, where you need to have time until it actually develops. Yeah. But uh, during that time, you can do something productive still. And even if you have to, let's say, somehow do something small to the malt whiskey, in between, there's plenty of time actually to be productive instead of wasting the time and doing yeah. some silly stuff that actually you shouldn't be doing. Because if you're doing the silly stuff, then you actually forget to do what's really important so that it becomes a beautiful uh, single malt whiskey. Well, um, yes, and that's that's another passion of mine. Um We didn't discuss this beforehand, but I love single malt whiskey. And there was a distillery in the UK, actually, that did that. They set up a new distillery. And once they had everything in the barrels, they can't do anything with it. They can't sell it for another three years, at least. So effectively, you could look at it and say that business can't do anything for the next three years. But what they then did is they used their skill and their knowledge, and they set up a side business as a gin distillery because they can sell that straight away. So they then distill the gin. And in the three years where you could think, well, there's dead time, they actually built a second business. Um, and, 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 and it's really, if you go back to your comment about being able to upskill your knowledge and read books and do things like that, that's, that's the real value in creating the time in your business. It's not so that it's, I, I don't believe it's so that you can just do more and therefore cram more into the day. It's, it's really, you, you find those valuable moments in the day that you create through the correct systems and automation so that you can focus on the bigger picture and things that are more important rather than just instead of producing 10 widgets, being able to produce 20 widgets which works in manufacturing, but if it's a service-based business, um, there's value that can be delivered far beyond just having more of the same per day. Exactly. And if you've got that extra time, you've got time as well to develop uh, maybe, let's say, uh, better marketing, other kind of things that maybe produce value as well for the clients who are purchasing your services or your products. Yeah, and, and, and even a often overlooked but immensely valuable thing it just gives you time to think as well um it, it doesn't you you don't have to fill all your time that you free up with action 
it could simply just to be to sit back, to think about what's the best next thing to do rather than rush into every little gap as if it's a vacuum that needs to be filled. Exactly, because otherwise people always find something to stuff it full of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pointless stuff. Well, well, yeah, yeah, whether it's worth doing or not, we if you want to fill your day, you can fill your day. <laughs> Exactly. And that's why, for instance, uh, sometimes we, you often hear that companies, for instance, try to streamline things. As an example, they go and say, we always do the payments on this day of the week or this day of the month, and this day mm -hmm. of the month, so that uh, even the accountants or, or the people who are actually having to sign off documents and the checks and so on, that they actually can be productive because they have to do it only twice, maybe a month yeah and the person who actually then has to press a button and send the money out uh, has only got to do it once or twice a month and it's done we can schedule it and it's not just messing up the whole day and being unproductive but because of being more focused on one thing you can you save much more time you speed up what you're doing and it's as well for the brain less stress because it doesn't have to jump all the time especially when you're doing programming it's i found always when i used to do programming a lot of stuff and, and workflows and all these things and we're so deep thing and somebody takes you out of your deep deep thinking it, it costs a good 30 minutes or more to mm. get back in yeah yeah and and there's um there's there's a book and I'm going to forget the name now. It was in my head, but now it's gone. Um, where they, they did research on that, where if you're if you're really focused and you then, um, someone interrupts you just for a couple of minutes, it, it on average, it would take 17 minutes or so for you to get back to the same level of focus that you had before someone interrupted you. And... And task switching is just, it's an evil thing. We we think it makes us more efficient, but it doesn't. And it, it reminds me, I don't know, um, um, our younger listeners won't be aware of this, but back in the day when you used to have to defragment the hard drive of your computer to get it back up to speed. Oh, yeah. It's that kind of thing where it's just putting all the, all the right things next to each other and together. And then the efficiency is there rather than it being all over the place and you having to keep hunting down. There's a little bit here and a little bit there. And you, you never build up mo momentum. You never build up focus or anything. And everyone's just running around doing bits of pieces. Exactly. And that makes it then very inefficient. People are just wasting times with time with stuff that's not really important or they're trying to do stuff that's actually not contributing in any way to the business whether by sales, marketing, organization, or even other kind of important things. It's just... And I, I, th I think it also creates an environment, and I've seen this. I've mm -hmm. not worked in a big office in quite a while, but I used to see it where people would turn up in the morning and they're not entirely sure what the day is for and what it is they need to achieve today or what their next point of focus is and we we with our software and with it in our own business as well and with our clients we focus heavily on creating metrics and to an extent task lists where the the goal is to get the number down to zero so that when i i turn up for work on a monday morning i log into the system it gives me a list of this is the next priority this is what you have to work on next rather than everyone just sort of showing up and then loosely doing whatever is is on top of the pile rather than what is actually important exactly and i used to do that as well i used to have in the evening before leaving the office i used to do my list and the next day i would then go through that list at the stuff then what needed to be done as well and the evening before leaving i would tick off as well all the things that i had achieved yeah. and this way i noticed okay what have i actually done what have i achieved what are the things that maybe i have to maybe prioritize more and i noticed as well where have i been uh, misled to doing stuff that's not important because there are as well other people in a in an office who mm -hmm. uh, might come to you and they need something really urgent and that has to be done and there's no question about it then the other stuff has to stay waiting or you have to maybe put it together, handle other kind of crisis, people <laughs> arguing and other craziness stuff. Yeah, oh. it, it, it's, it's, I just think it's worth, it's worth also reflecting that 
most things that are that appear to be or that are treated like it's a crisis, most often it's not. Hmm. Um, it, it 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 might scream the loudest, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is actually a crisis and it's the most important thing to focus on. And I think, especially when when the messages comes from a manager or a superior, it's very easy to completely derail your day because someone made a comment and suddenly something appears to be a crisis. And then when the dust settles, everyone realizes, well, actually, that wasn't that big a deal. Yeah, I know. I know. This is similar like things where people then complain and then you actually run your system and, and track all the things that the different employees did. And you actually notice, well, he did all the job by the book. He, yeah. did, he he took care of it immediately did this and so on yeah and it's all okay actually and then the person actually says who i'm happy that i did enter all these things and i use the system because i'm off the hook and then not, and then from then on everybody else they noticed oh we use the system as well so that we if something somebody really complains something big 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 at yeah. least we have a chance not to get, be <laughs> scolded it's, it's, or tarred. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting point because a lot of the time people are reticent to use systems and processes because they mm. feel it restricts them or it's there as a as a stick rather than a carrot and it's just there to sort of big brother keeping an eye and knowing exactly what you're doing. And Yeah, and the thing is but, extra work. Yeah. And, a waste and, of time. Yeah, if, <laughs> if the system... Not- if the system's not implemented correctly, then yes, it is extra work and it, and, it, and it feels like a waste of time. But there's also the efficiencies gained. So I know in, in our business, we have things set up so that I don't have to keep asking the other guys. And we were talking beforehand, we've got, mm-hmm. I'm in the UK, we've got people in the Philippines and Colombia and, and, and all over. But I don't have to keep asking them, how are you getting on with this? Is this finished yet? Have you done this? Is there a problem here? Because they're using the systems we've put in place, which makes it very easy for me at a glance to see who's who's finished with what, what's taking longer than we thought it would take, and and therefore we don't it, it, it sort of eliminates unnecessary conversations and makes my job easier because I can see what everyone's up to and and what our progress is, and therefore I can plan the next step um, quite easily because I know where there's a gap in the workflow. Yeah, exactly. And you then have, uh, let's say, a better overview of what's happening, actually, mm. a better feeling. And especially if you have to lead people, you know, you don't have to keep pestering them and asking them, what are you doing? Because usually you would expect them to come to you and say, I need help with this and this and so on. Or yeah. I've got a this and this problem, I can't get it solved. Then you can, of course, go and say, wait a minute, let's go get somebody else from a team to help you. Or let's go and get somebody from outside or find a system or whatever mm. and buy it and just fix the problem yeah. instead of um, trying to eventually get sick because you just can't solve it and it just mushes you up like mushy peas. Yeah. <laughs> when it's overcooked. <laughs> That's no good good thing. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So uh, looking at these things, as you said, um, Businesses, it's so important for especially small businesses. They, they get messed up if the stuff gets off track, if they have no proper lead. The, the things just get confusing in that. Um, where do you see things that people can actually really improve the design of the processes and so on? What's the experience in that area? Yeah, so the I think what happens a lot is people – don't get round to doing it because they they think it's it, it's a couple of things. One, one, people think their businesses are too complex um, mm. to have a system. And my my stock answer to that generally is if you think about the Porsche 911, um, you can literally have it in whatever color you want. And there are 22 engine options. Now, I would suggest that very few people have a business more complex than building a car like that with all those options. And that's just 22 engine options, let alone all the other options that are in there. And they manage to churn out thousands of these because there's a system in place. And the way that I would approach any system like this is if you imagine that you have a duck floating on the water, gliding across a lake, 
nice misty morning. Everyone's taking pictures of the lovely duck just gliding effortlessly across the water. Well, we all know that under the water, the feet are paddling like mad to give us the impression of the duck just gliding on the water. And that's what our businesses are. What our customers want to and should experience is what's above the water and the systems and processes that we put in place is below the water. Um, And to a large extent, our customers don't care about that part. So I would always just look if there's a process that you want to define so that you can decide what can you automate and what can you eliminate is to look at it and, and just on a whiteboard don't try and use fancy tools for this don't don't put another piece of software between your brain and what you're trying to get to just on a whiteboard just draw a line imagine that's the level of the water and then at the top just put down okay let's say we get a new inquiry okay when there's a new inquiry the customer should experience And then you just do the steps of what the customer should experience, not asking questions about how are we going to do this. It's all just about what do we want the customer or the prospect to experience in this part of our business. And then once you've got that defined, then you look below the water and say, okay, in order for the customer to get a a, a thank you confirmation email immediately after submitting an inquiry, What do we need to put in place? And then we say, okay, well, if there's an inquiry, we want within two hours, we want a phone call to be made. Well, okay, the customer experiences the phone call. We know we need a system that can allocate a task to someone for every new inquiry that that call needs to be made within two hours. So it's just looking at those two perspectives and then just chunking it down and saying, okay, well, this looks like a really big complex part of our business what are the key milestones because in all of these things if you take every business has to get an inquiry service the inquiry and get paid those are the three key milestones that you can overlay on pretty much any business you can walk into and then you go and say well okay what's the detail between the first two milestones and you just chunk it down that way rather than look at it and say well here's this enormous complex thing that we're trying to achieve, it's overwhelming. So we're just going to carry on the way we are doing everything manually and things fall through the cracks and things go wrong. And we work far harder than we need to for the output. Yeah. And speaking of the duck, you never know whether the duck is actually standing on a midget submarine being you, smart you but instead of paddling. <laughs> and maybe yeah. you think, oh, I found the right thing to stand on and I don't need to paddle like crazy. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm being smart and acting less, like as if it's in the ballet dance and yeah. being suave and everybody getting taking photos of him. And he says, hey, I've got the best, uh, what would you say? Like Andy Warhol once said, uh, every person would be famous uh, for five minutes in yeah. their life. Which is yeah. rather funny. And that duck is uh, more than five minutes if he goes several, several times in a circle. Which, when you think of it, if you're going in circles in your business, you might think, okay, maybe you need a system like that so that you're not actually wasting time and aggravating. Because I can imagine when people are doing over and over certain tasks and then actually notice that they're being inefficient, they get frustrated. Yeah. They say, wait a minute, I should be able to do this and this thing instead of doing the same thing over and over and over. And for instance, I did that uh, for my business as well, where we had certain texts that we, emails that we send out, we have templates and we just need to open the template and then just add one or two sentences, maybe yeah. change a sentence that's relevant and send it out instead of writing 500 times the same email over and over and over yeah. from scratch, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, Yeah. which is which the reality is that is how it is done in most businesses where Mm -hmm. an inquiry comes in. I reply roughly with the same answer every time, but I'm doing it manually. Um, And and, 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 and that's such a small example, but everyone can understand that. And that just permeates throughout the entire business um, and adds up to an enormous cost for very little output value. Exactly. And that's the thing. It's like with a duck having a great way of having a great show or being exhausted by the time he reaches the other side of the yeah. pond. 
and and, and it's also it's 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 not whilst it has the impact on the business of being more efficient and being able to scale with a smaller team and reach your revenue goals it's not just that because people have to at least enjoy their life so if they're going to turn up to work for you and they're just doing this drudgery repetitive work over and over and you can alleviate that through the right systems and processes and automation you can actually uncover value in those staff members and deliver higher value to their lives by them actually doing a job that is is important and that they feel pride in i always think about my wife is a doctor and she delivers massive value to her patients but I also know we came back from a week's holiday last week and she was faced with an inbox of 280 emails. Oh. And, and if you think how long it takes for someone to go through and reply and everything, 280 emails, at the cost of a consultant um, doctor, that's a, that, it's a waste of money. As, as far as the provider is concerned, because you're paying someone with that skill level to do such a menial job. Exactly. And that's the thing where you could do it completely different, as I say, with automation and even finding ways to make it easier as well, even if she had somebody uh, going through these emails so that the person can maybe prioritize them mm. and, and uh, categorize them in a faster way. So I say, okay, let's get these and these cases done first. And then let's these we have to call, these we have to reschedule, and these we can cancel because let's say they've already gone somewhere else during a holiday and just yeah. want to let you know that... Uh, they'd like to cancel their appointment because they had to do it somewhere else because they had some issue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But of course, by the time she gets through it to the last email where actually cancelled, it's the time the appointment thinks, where's the person? Should yeah. the person, the uh, patient have come now? Mm. <laughs> Instead, yeah. she could have known, okay, I haven't got anybody anywhere this time. I can do my emails or other kind of stuff or, or read the newest scientific documents. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At least use the time productive instead of when's the person coming when's the person coming yes it's late where is she yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're wasting time instead of focus on doing something really productive and yeah another person is freaking out but uh yeah so that's that's a great thing as um you mentioned with all this automation and as well as code free sy systems and all these things um how can people actually reach out to you if they'd like to know more about as well Macanta CRM and, and what you do and maybe how you can even help them? Yeah, so the, the easiest way is just to get in touch with either website. So it's macantacrm.com um, and you can just get in touch with us there or you can also grab a free account of Macanta. Um, and then we'll reach out to you through there. And we, we sort of work in a couple of ways. Macanta is set up so that you can do it all yourself, so you can configure it and, and do what you want there. But we also do some consulting, and we have partners as well who can then take on that task for you so you don't have to learn the new skill. You already know your business, and you can get them to help you um, putting the, the processes and the automation and everything in place. But yeah, the, the website is really the best way to get in touch with us. Awesome. That sounds really great. I'm sure we'll be talking in the future again about similar topics, Peter. So yeah, have a great day. I'm sure we'll be listening soon again to similar topics. That's great. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me.
I hope you enjoy today's episode of The Growth Zone with Christian Barge. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review or rating here on iTunes or on podchaser.com. If you found the content helpful, then share it on social media. I would like to invite you to follow our show so that you don't miss the upcoming interviews with leaders in the market. Simply visit the website follow.prmediareach.com. I will be adding the link also to the description of this episode so that you just need to click on that link. For those of you who are listening and signing up to follow the show, I have reserved a free copy of the ultimate guide on content marketing. This is the strategy that got me top corporate clients like McDonald's, Linde, Hewlett Packard, Deutsche Bank, Volvo and many others. That strategy has been working for over 10 years. It also got me contracts with police, transport authorities, military and several universities and even leading research institutes. For sure, it also worked wonders as it got me many small, medium-sized entrepreneurs and enterprises as clients. And that even included international clients from all around the world. The link to sign up for our free broadcasting service and the guide is follow.prmediareach.com. That will give you access to the most recent version of my ultimate guide on content marketing. You can follow me as well on Twitter by using the Twitter handle CAP Barge. That's spelled Charlie Alpha Papa Bravo Alpha Romeo Tango Sierra Charlie Hotel. Yes, that is CAP Barge. Charlie, Alpha, Papa, Bravo, Alpha, Romeo, Tango, Sierra, Charlie, Hotel.